Welcome in to Getting Help from Uncle Sam. And we have with us today Lieutenant General Stephen Quast, who has ignited a fire under the River Region, and actually all of us, because yes. he has brought to us a new way of thinking and a vision that all of us need to pay attention to. And I really am anxious to talk to you about what you have ignited here, particularly with us, and actually in the entire nation. And that is CyberVision. Well, you're, uh, you're kind to say that, although uh, I am nothing more than a, a match uh, because <laughs> the, the wood was already here. And uh, the, this is a recognition, though, that uh, the, the survival of a nation is based on the growth of its economy and the ability to protect that economy. And so that's where I come in. One of my jobs as a national security professional is to protect the American economy, the American government, and the American sovereign soil, and Americans anywhere in the world. Um, and as the world evolves and as technologies are invented, they become weapons for those that have evil intent. Cyber has become a weapon for those that are evil. And so we as a civilization has be, have become very dependent on cyber. We use our, our banking, oh. our transportation. Our, it's our life. It's everything. Um, so the question is, uh, how do we defend against the, the evil that is trying to use cyber as a weapon against us? And uh, so for this community, for example, to continue to grow its economy, uh, the, 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 the world is going digital. We call it the digital age mm -hmm. or the networked age. The way you protect that is by really investing in an architecture that allows you to use all these benefits of cyber, but provide your independence, your civil liberties, and your privacy all at the same time. So this cyber city and the gig city that the mayor and the governor and everybody has been mm -hmm. willing to invest in is a new step into the future where Montgomery and the River Region can attract business, can start building business and growth of the economy in the cyber age where we can do these things and be safe at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's most important because there's not a day that goes by that it's not in a newscast, that, that cyber has, has been breached in some way, shape, or form. That's right. And so, you know, just as clever as humanity was at inventing the cyber age, mm -hmm. we are clever enough yes. to build a solution to this. Because really the failure, I would say, is that we've become so enamored with it that we've become dependent on it without thinking through the security structures. So that's what the Cyber College and this work is doing. It's thinking deeply about how do you do this and protect our civil liberties and protect the things we value. But more importantly, it will build the economy. So we are moving as a nation from an industrial age right. to an information age. Mm -hmm. And those uh, communities, like the River Region, that start tooling for a different future are going to be the big winners. And this is the, the journey that starts, you know, the journey of a thousand miles that begins with the first step. Mm -hmm. This first step has been taken by this community. And what you're going to see is it's going to make it more affordable to get the fundamentals right of this community. Education, health, protection, services to people that need to live and mm -hmm. have shelter. And, and those things can be done better, faster, cheaper, and smarter with cyber but only if you architect the cyber in a way that protects your civil liberties, yes. your independence, and your privacy. That's right. Um, this is interesting. I'm always interested in, in what the people who watch us, how they can make a difference because mm -hmm. they're sitting here listening to this and responsible people want to know, what can I do to help? And, and I, we, we, I think that if it's like everything else, you're going to wind up having to go to funding to shift this paradigm. Correct. And is there any way that the individual out here watching all of this can help with that? Yeah, I think there's two things that, uh, that they can do. The first is be informed, and, and that takes some time. You have to be able to read uh, material that may not be you know, that uh, fun yeah. novel that uh, right. you know, makes you feel be. good. Uh, but I think it's our civic duty to be informed about what's going on around us. So that inf uh, being informed is first and foremost. The second is make sure it's a conversation with your community. You, you, uh, you have to talk to your uh, legislators. You have right. to talk to right. those people that you have given power for policy, strategy, mm -hmm. and resources uh, to make your life better. And just simply asking those questions. What are you doing to protect us in the cyber age? What are you doing to grow our economy into the digital age so companies are 
kicking and screaming, wanting to come to the river region. Mm -hmm. What have you done to take our education into the cyber age so that we have higher education at lower price points? Uh, the questions can sometimes spur a conversation that help everybody get informed because when the politician gets asked a question by a citizen and a, by a voter, they're going to go do their homework and they're going to come back with answers and that helps. That's right. I just think that we should never forget that we have power. And I think that generally people feel like, well, what can I do? You can do something. You vote and you mm -hmm. study and you get educated and you elect people who will take care of this country. Right. And right. we do have power and we must never forget that as individuals. We and have power to do good. And when you're going to visit with your legislators, make sure it's when they're not in session because it's mm -hmm. hard to get their ear when they're busy doing their work in session. When they're out, they're going to listen to their constituents very quickly. And so, you know, in the military, we we are fortunate enough to be agnostic of politics. So if you yes. if yes. you want to yes. learn about right. cyber, right, come ask our professors that study cyber because mm -hmm. they are looking at it through the lens of securing American society, and uh, you can get your facts without any political spin. Now, are they available to speak to civic groups? Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Oh, yes. And see, that I think is another yes. mm -hmm. venue whereby you know you have access to people who can educate you. Right. And you don't right. want a, an ignorant vote. You want an educated vote because you know what you're voting for that's right. and what so, you're fighting right. for. So if you go to Maxwell.com, we have the capability of hooking up any volunteer with any opportunity to volunteer. Mm -hmm. So that if you're a group that wants somebody to come and speak on a certain topic, go there and it will be able to hook you up with a subject matter expert on that base. And because we educate the entire Air Force, there is no business, there is no enterprise that we do not have some world-class expert somewhere in that university that can come and speak to you on that topic. Thank Great. you so much for yes. the resources that you have brought. And it's been a combination of it's God, it's love, it's kindness, it's humanity, right. mm -hmm. it's everything that this country is built on. And thank you for reminding us because complacency builds failure. I don't care what venue it's in. That's right. And we are so thankful yes. that you are the match that has <laughs> well, lighted right so not many of us. Well, the match, but he struck the match. It's <laughs> the match can't do anything if it has uh, not been struck. But remember, there's it's danger struck. with fire, so yeah. I so, you know, yeah. you have to <laughs> know be that. careful. And, you know, and, uh, we would need to let our viewers know that as this show is airing, that uh, General Quast is now at Air Education and Training Command in San Antonio, Texas. Correct. But he'll be coming back here very often because Maxwell comes under your command still. Yes, sir. And the wonderful thing is you've spent so much time here that you're going to know exactly what Maxwell's all about. And I'm going to know what I need to bring to yes. help you. Absolutely. So thank you for that. Thank you Thank so you. Much. God bless you and God bless That's every person in uniform. Thank you. We wouldn't be here doing this show if it were not for you. That's right. And we'll be right back right after this.